Hi, welcome to iRebel on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Meredith and I'm here with Sarah and we thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. good morning, Meredith. Good to be here again. Yes, definitely. So um, we had a topic that uh, we came up with because it was sort of a, a we kind of wanted to rant, although it's probably not going to be much of a rant, but we wanted to talk about this topic because it comes up a lot. Um, I know I ran across an article that sort of angered me and you had uh, sort of a, a run-in or a, a story that uh, that got you going. So we're going to talk about that today. and. Um, we're going to start with this article and uh, going to go ahead and read it for you and then we're going to talk about it. So um, it's an article from a website called Dangerous Minds and the title is Sometimes It's Okay to Hate Kids. Ousted American Apparel CEO Dove Charney interviewed at age 12. So um, this is a I don't know anything about Dove Charney. Uh, no, I'd never heard of him before this. Before I came across this article, I, I know more about him now because I looked into him. But um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start reading it. Okay, everything the American Apparel clothing line advertises belies an odious fine print. For all the boasting of its success from founder and former CEO Dove Charney, the company always seems to teeter on bankruptcy. The promise of a perfectly comfy t-shirt come at, the, at a hefty price tag, and the quality and durability of the clothes frequently fall short. Claims of sweatshop free and made in the USA are rendered moot by suspicious confidentiality agreements, union busting, and an absolute slew of sexual harassment lawsuits. And now finally, Charney has been dethroned as CEO by his own board for rampant business-related scumminess, allegedly. It's legitimately baffling that it took him this long to get fired. Then again, it appears that Charney has been getting away with being an asshole for a very, very long time. Before he had more lawsuits than retail outlets, and yes, even before he went bankrupt for the first time on his daddy's startup cash, Charney was quite the little hustler. Seen here at 12 years old in the 1983 comedy documentary, 20th Century Chocolate Cake, Little Dove bemoans the injustice of summer camp, where he doesn't retain complete control of his finances. I'm not sure if this is the Israeli summer camp his father sent him to as a disciplinary measure, but if it was, it didn't work. Charney Sr. said his son kept escaping. Morris Charney eventually ended up working from home to keep an eye on Dove, as he was difficult to handle. There are also rumors that the precocious little scamp was expelled from his posh Connecticut boarding school. Accounts vary, but they're both pretty disgusting. Think either ejaculate or feces. Behold the sweet face of future capitalist pig and absolute slime ball. He's positively incensed that a summer camp won't let him walk around with a wad of cash. He's 12. I tend to be fond of obnoxious children. Everyone's a beast at some point in childhood. But even I shudder at the sound of this little black market hustler when he spat with disgust. They just do it because they don't want any poor kids to be jealous. Summer camp rules equals communism. Okay, so uh, we're going to play the audio um, so you guys can hear what he's saying, which I don't see that is that bad. It seems fine to me. It's actually pretty cute. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the points made in this article, just a couple. Um, first of all, I, I take uh, issue with the use of capitalist pig um, that, uh, for obvious reasons. And, uh, and calling him a black market hustler, that's not cool. He's not a black market hustler. Um, and then, you know, just, oh, we can talk about this after the audio, but uh, this knee-jerk reaction to him saying... Um, we, they don't want poor kids to be jealous. He's not actually saying anything against poor kids. It's just sort of, it, it's not, he didn't spit with disgust. It's That's really not an appropriate way to describe it. Um, and then just a, a couple quick points. Um, he was sent to summer camp as a disciplinary measure. Um, you know, and he was going to boarding school as well, and it says he kept escaping. So that's kind of a red flag for me. Uh, you know, when it, it, all these things seem to point to 
maybe some neglect on the parents' part. And, you know, when a kid keeps escaping from some place, well, you have to look into the place that you're sending them, not the kid. It's It just seems to be a strange reaction to have when, when you're dealing with a child, and especially one like he is with such a big personality, um, which he definitely exactly. is seems that maybe being dismissed and sent away led him to develop some skills. Yes. Some coping skills. Absolutely. And um, that shows up later, not actually much later in his life when he starts American Apparel at age 15. So, oh yeah, that was another thing that I had a problem with was that I um, I saw an interview with he explained how he started American Apparel, and it was at 15, and the article says he started it with his daddy's startup cash, which is disingenuous, because what he was doing was, it was very interesting, actually. Uh, he lived in Canada at the time, and they didn't have all cotton t-shirts in Canada. It's just like a poly cotton blend. So uh, what he did was he would go to New York on the train. I don't know why. Um, Maybe his parents stayed in New York or they had a different home there. I'm not sure how he got back and forth free, as frequently as he did. But he would buy T-shirts in America and then smuggle them across the border and sell them in Canada. So, yes, possibly his f father supplied the cash to buy the T-shirts. But we're not talking thousands of dollars here. This is just a small right. amount of money. It could have just been his spending money while he was at the Connecticut boarding school. Definitely, yeah. It wasn't that much money, and he explained how it started off small, and he just kept doing it, and he started making a lot of money. And this is age 15 he's doing this stuff, so that's mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. So should we listen to the 12-year-old? Yeah, let's listen to the audio. camp on Thursday. We, you see, we bring all the money, but they always say, oh, we'll, we'll hold on your money for you. And, uh, you know, you mean they it to you? well, you bring your own money, okay? No two ways about it. They'll take it. They'll keep it in their little file. And they'll give you a dollar here, dollar there. So you're always geared up, you know, sort of like a communist camp. How do you like that? You're shitty. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think they should do? I think they should let you keep your own money. You think you could manage your own money? Oh, yeah. Look, look, look. you see, I met a lot of other kids had problems. You know, I sort of cheated the, the yeah. system. <laughs> How do you cheat the system? Yeah, yeah, well, you just keep your own money. Well, you just give them a little, like two bucks, and then you have the rest. Like <laughs> so you think you can handle your own money? They just do it because they don't want any poor kids to be jealous. You know, a lot of, it doesn't matter, you're poor, rich, they all come and go anyway. What happens when, when your parents send you stuff? Well, you know, uh, that's, that, uh, okay, that's where it's really communist. When the other stuff isn't communist. Um, uh, well, the problem is they send you, so the first two days, um, you'll, you, you'll, you'll eat all your stuff, you, know, you can't eat all this grapes, and you don't have diarrhea and all this. So, um... Do they make you share it with Yeah, then the, after the two days, all that stuff, you got to share. And there's a lot left, let me tell you. And you know what happened? They am all them guys ate day and night grapes and fruits and all these chuck bars coming out of their ears. But you know, I saved my stuff. And all of a sudden... You got nothing left for yourself. Two days. Bring all your stuff for lunch. That's what we're going to eat. And I didn't hardly get anything. I think all my, 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 my parents were... This crazy communist camp's off. Yeah. Get this, this despicable. Despicable. <laughs> crazy communist camp. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's it's interesting. He's sort of showing, it's true. I mean, the, the method of redistribution is would fall under communism. So he's at least got that down at age 12. He's absolutely correct. And I'm sure it's done under the guise of sharing. Mm -hmm. You have to share, have compassion, but it's when it's forced. Right. Yeah. You can't. Uh, this happens all the time, and we see it. And uh, parents are constantly saying, "Share, share, share," and they're forcing 
kids to share. I mean, this happened to me. I'm sure it happened to you. Mm -hmm. um, it, where you're forced to share your things, and when you're forced, it's not sharing. So uh, I think that, I mean, that's got to be one of the things that starts kids off at an early age getting confused about values. They, they, don't, they aren't, it's not properly taught. It, it's not sharing if you're forced to do it, just like <laughs> paying your taxes is not, it's not voluntary. It's not your duty if you're not doing it out of the kindness of your heart. It's forced on you. So it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to understand that concept, but a child certainly can see when you're saying, give Tommy your shovel, share, and you're pulling the shovel out of <laughs> your child's hand and handing it to Tommy. Mm -hmm. Kids see the discrepancy there. Right. From yeah. the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And Little Dove is right on. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And so uh, that was the kind of. Um, sad to me that we're picking on him as a little kid when he's really not saying anything horrible. He's, I, I don't know if I mentioned about the poor people, but yeah, he, he wasn't putting poor kids down. He was just saying they exist and they come and go. And so that's kind of annoying to me with this knee-jerk reaction, oh, he can't say anything about poor people. And especially in this particular article titled, Sometimes It's Okay to Hate Kids. So we're all supposed to be so compassionate toward poor people, but not children. Uh, that's that's exactly. sort of <laughs> missing exactly. there. Yeah. And no mention of the economic understanding that this little 12-year-old has. He understands scarcity and the collectivism of putting all of his candy into the pool and then nobody cares, nobody pays any attention to when the next loot will come, when the next bounty of candy will be there and they just eat it all. It's right. not theirs, their parents, especially if their parents didn't send any, they're not putting anything in they're just take they're, they're not getting any any other way so they're going to take as much as they can and eat as much as they can and little 12 year old dove is saying I manage just fine I save mine and I can't eat all those grapes in two days but after two days I'm forced to share mm -hmm. my care package right and and he misses out on all this stuff um and, and I've seen this play out. It's interesting because these are economic concepts, and I've seen it play out in my life a few times, this particular type of, of thing. And it's easy to see how that can get screwed up on a, if you implement it on a large scale because on a small scale it doesn't work. Um, and when I was young, I, the same thing happened. I would save up uh, my things and... Um, but my sisters didn't, so I ended up not having the things that I set aside. And then, you know, when I would something, well, my mother would just say, uh, well, eat it faster. So, which never helped because I didn't eat it faster in the first place. It wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do. So um, that's a little, a similar story. Um, but it, it was the same thing, and it was very upsetting, and it went on for years. So you, and no you have, wonder we're all so confused about economics. Right. Yeah. It's such a dismal science. Uh, but really, it's pretty easy. And I'm sure all of us have examples of it in our daily lives that we can find. So, like he is. So, that's right. It. Yeah. Um, one of the, the comments on the article, which is fantastic, it sort of sums up my whole, I want to thank this person because they really did a good job summing up the entirety of my thoughts on this. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, and it's, it goes, titling an article, Sometimes It's Okay to Hate Kids, is as suspect as the highly dubious behavior Dove Charney is accused of and demonstrates a real lack of compassion for another human being who is on a negative path and is in need of healing. Shame on you, dangerous minds, for adding fuel to the fire that is this witch hunt. You're simply encouraging herd mentality behavior like any other trashy mainstream media outlet, and it's disgusting. I'm not pleased with the kind of person he's been accused of being. I know people who have been friends with him and who have worked for him, and their tales about him definitely have made me creeped out by him. But even mass murderers deserve compassion. 
arguably them most of all, considering how atrophied their hearts must be, to be able to commit such atrocities. But you don't become capable of becoming that sort of person overnight. It comes down to not receiving the love and acceptance we all need when we're babies and little kids. Uh, Dangerous Minds sells itself as a progressive, intelligent, forward-thinking website, but the tone of this particular post betrays that lie quite substantially. So, Wow, that's awesome. That's a really great response. I hope that the author of the article reads that. Yes, me too. Because it brings up such an excellent point that there's such a discrepancy what's being put out into the world in mass quantity isn't really the example the examples we would want to model for for most of all children that we're raising up to hopefully be good people compassionate people and we have no compassion for them exactly so we're wondering you know I, I hear people give their opinions all the time on why children are disrespectful nowadays which I don't agree with anyway but um, they'll cite video games and they'll cite spanking and they'll cite uh, not being taught manners all of these things get being children being spoiled given into too often but really when it it's obvious to me that that we're missing passion for our children we we have these double standards for children we we hold them to a higher standard than we hold adults and i you know you're wondering how to stop things like this how to how to keep people from this trap of of growing up to be a criminal yet we're doing the opposite of what we need to be doing which is you know showing compassion for children in general and this guy and and any people that we run across really absolutely it's the best thing that we could do so um, my nephew was mustering up the courage to order his own slice of pizza at the farmers market from the pizza lady this weekend, this past weekend, and he went up and ordered himself a piece of cheese pizza, and the pizza vendor responded to him, "You would like a piece of cheese pizza, please?" <laughs> and he was he took pause and turned to his mom, which I love that he turned to his mom for guidance, and she was standing by, and said, "Do I have to say please?" And she said. You can. You could say please. I don't think you necessarily have to say please. You're paying her for something, a service from her, and she's going to provide a service, and you'll pay her for that. But you could if you wanted to. And so they went on through their day, but it just became apparent to my sister. And it's something that I think you and I have experienced, too. We have children that are out and interfacing with the public often because we're homeschooling. And it's difficult to navigate all of that when you're trying to raise your children to be to think things logically to um, you know treat people equally adults children everybody and then to have something like that just so knee-jerk right take place and I really think it is knee-jerk mm -hmm. reaction and, and I and I want compassion for the vendor too but I think what she's putting forward to to the child is that you, you didn't do it right. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And and so, yeah, you've got this discrepancy where the adult thinks that this is what they're supposed to be doing as this is their duty as a, uh, you know, it takes a village <laughs> kind of mentality, which I agree with. Um, but they're not noticing that instead of instead of helping they're hurting the situation because this might be the first time he's ordering anything I know it's difficult for kids and you know they do a lot of stuff for the first time I mean they're children so you know you gather up all this courage and you do it and he, here this adult comes along and says you're not doing it right and that can be really discouraging I mean who knows how many um, you know phobias and, and and sort of how much anxiety that causes in people and I'm sure it does and a Absolutely. lot of people absolutely yeah I mean that can be really detrimental but at the same time that they're, they're not people who do that they're not noticing or understanding that aspect of it they're thinking this is what I should do so uh, it's a real problem 
and it's not even it's not even out of malice it's just there that's right I mean exactly this is what we've all this is the paradigm that we've all grown up in we've all probably experienced something like this growing up and around and without even thinking about it stimulus response we're just <laughs> acting on it again in the world towards children that need the most compassion yes. because we all are children at some point um, and then I wanted to make another point about that so what if you would have just decided to model that and turned to her helper and said could you please get a plate with a cheese pizza on young man thank you and then modeled that to somebody else versus saying directly to him you know, if yeah. she really felt like she needed to have a teachable moment, which, you know, I just don't. I think <laughs> you don't know that exactly this could have been his very first time ordering something on his own, and he's mustered up all this courage. And um, really, do adults say please when they're ordering pizza? Does she say please when she's ordering pizza? I mean, exactly. I don't even know that we notice this kind of thing unless it's children who we're scrutinizing constantly for every little thing. So That's right. That's right. Because it was a child, you're you're like putting them under the microscope. Are they being the perfect little specimen of human? Right. Yeah. yeah. She could have actually said, "Okay, that'll be $2, please." So, you know. There you go. I mean, just <laughs> on yeah. that. So, yeah. one other story that I came across was of a young girl that was shopping in a yarn shop with her mother for yarn for, for her first knitting project and she was reprimanded by the shopkeeper for handling buttons that had different designs on them as she was sorting them through and deciding which ones she would like to purchase mm -hmm. and um, she left in tears and the mother returned later to talk to the shopkeeper and explain to her that have you ever thought that you would never do that with an adult shopper customer and the shopkeeper responded that well I have children in here whose parents aren't watching them and I can't have them handling my merchandise and destroying it mm -hmm. yeah which is kind of a bogus excuse in my opinion uh, I've, I've seen that play out I've, I've been in situations where um, I am the shopkeeper and I have co-workers and children come in would come in all the time and it was distressing to me this was I mean this goes way back this this sort of uh, pet peeve of mine of, of treating children badly uh, you know and the moment the kids would walk into the store and it was at a museum so there were kids constantly and uh, they would just every time oh kids oh what are they doing oh I can't stand the kids all the time and <laughs> I I didn't see it they weren't messing anything up they weren't they they were always polite on their best behavior hilarious they were a pretty much a bright spot in my day but the rest of the people just would get super annoyed by them for really honestly no reason it wasn't like they were screwing everything up. They they certainly didn't any more than the adults did. So I saw some adults <laughs> do, do some pretty terrible things. Yeah. Right. And, That's the thing. I mean, this this is a fallacy for the shopkeeper to say that children sometimes come in and their parents don't watch them because adults sometimes come in and don't take take have respect for your your property in your shop. Mm -hmm. Just maybe even as much. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think this is just, it's, a, it's an issue, it's a problem, um, you know, and I had this sort of perspective before I knew about all these things, about peaceful parenting, about, before my perspective shifted to understanding that children aren't there to be modeled into something you want them to be, that they're a full human being at when they are children, they're not cooking, <laughs> they're just they're they're to be treated as you would treat any other human being and and that the best way to uh, 
show them values is to live values yourself so that they can look around and they see these things in their life and they understand how it works because that's what they're trying to do all the time so once you shift into this perspective of their they're just people they're the same as any other person um, things become a lot different you start to notice these things so you start to understand that that you know well I mean kicking them out of a store is detrimental I, I'm sure the shopkeeper understood that in the first place but maybe the pizza vendor didn't so, probably yeah. not and you know I do think some of a lot of these ideas that people hold about children are really are really in the world, not the children. It's a convenience for the grown-ups right. to just say, you know, you need your mother to, to do this for you and be in this store shopping for you. Um, or, you know, you need to be told how to spend your time or you'll never spend your time wisely. You need to be spanked or you'll never learn and you'll grow up to be just a completely out of control adult, which is actually we found that's exactly the opposite, but that's another subject for another day. But that's just a convenience for the grown-ups. It's a lot easier to just dole out a punishment like that or just say, blanket, no, you can't do that, than to take the time to really model the behavior or have a conversation uh, to bring understanding about the situation, mm -hmm. to have some compassion that they are practicing all of these things and they're not they are fully human and sometimes it's okay to hate kids no it's not right it's really not it's not any more okay to hate kids than to say it's okay to hate gays it's okay to hate blacks it's okay to hate women it's okay to hate men we're not doing anything to to move humanity forward if we're holding beliefs like that and like that mm -hmm. yeah i agree I, I think that if if it had any other type, well, if it if you replaced kids with any other large group of people, it would be outrageous. People would be up in arms, and rightfully so. Um, but and when if it, a child had written this article, we would be calling out cyberbullying and mm -hmm. getting the authorities involved. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I think adults, when it comes to bullying. Um, you know, I have my own ideas, and that's definitely a big topic for another time. But, you know, this is a, a good little start here. Let's it make is. sure that we're not bullying our children ourselves so that they're, they're, they're rehashing this behavior that they've learned from the adults around them, which, I mean, you can see this all the time. So. Right. And I can have compassion for all these people because... This is what they experienced. But I think if we have a conversation and we put forward ideas where we could take the time to think about this, I mean, I wasn't always like this either. I had different views about children and parenting. I have changed, and now I see things very differently. Yep, me too, yeah. Yeah, so just uh, get it out there slowly. It seems like a big mountain to climb, but... Um, yeah. Do you think we're out of time? Yes. Um, yeah, we have a couple minutes, but yeah, we're just at the end now. So, yeah, yeah I, I can keep talking forever, uh, but I think we at least touched the surface of this topic. I got, I got it off my chest. Right. That's right. good. <laughs> well, it's always fun to chat with you. It goes so fast. It definitely but. does. Tune in to the Voluntary Virtues Network. Thank you, Mike Shanklin. We're iRebel, and we are on Saturday morning, 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we look forward to chatting again. Yes. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Bye, Meredith. Bye.